Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Well, well, well. Hail and welcome back, everyone. Making sure that my camera angles and all the fun stuff like that are good. We're looking good. All right. We are looking good. And we are back. Uh, took a short break last week, which is important, guys. Um, and I appreciate everyone's understanding with that. You know, um, I always feel like it's, uh, you know, part of my responsibility and obligation to put, you know, regular, meaningful uh, content out. And I try to do my best with that. And then there's some times where I say, you know what, I need any time away i need to just you know take a break from from this thing and i have a luxury of doing that this isn't a uh, a means of income to support my family this is more of a hobby and, and and you know all of you folks that are subscribed following um and and doing everything that you do to to you know stay in touch with with what i put out here um is greatly appreciated but it's not my bread and butter as they say you know so i take the liberty to take care of myself and 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 those that are uh my first obligation my first responsibility is my family and i want you guys to remember to do the same thing you know i saw something um a couple of weeks ago on a uh on somebody's like facebook timeline and it was um and it was something that i thought was important and i shared it and it said you know something along the lines of you know, this is this is a reminder, especially around this time of year, the holiday season, is that you are under no obligation or responsibility to put yourself through financial, emotional, mental, anxiety, stress, and stuff like that, just to give somebody something or or whatever. And uh, you know, this time of year is very stressful for a lot of people because again, they feel obligated to do things that they probably aren't obligated to do, you know, this, this, you know, uh, just inherent like feeling of, oh, it's the holiday season. I got to, you know, buy shit for everybody. And, you know, you don't, you don't have, you know, you may have certain people that you have obligations to and everybody's life and everybody's family is a little bit different, but always remember that if you can't be the best version of yourself at the most, you know, best uh, peak uh, performance and all that, then you're, you're, you're selling everybody else short and you're not going to be able to do the things that you feel that you're obligated to do anyway, um, to the best of your ability. So take the time is my point, you know, to take care of, to take care of yourself. Um, so it kind of ties into what's going on this week, um, on this podcast. And so, uh, with the holidays coming right around the corner, as, as of right now, we are, you know, one week away from the start of what a lot of you pagans out here are talking about is Yule or Yuletide. And uh, as you can tell from the name of this podcast, you're doing it wrong. No, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I've, I've gone on the record a, a lot of times as saying that uh, there's nobody out here that can tell you how to heathen or how to practice your paganism or how to practice your spirituality um, to the degree that if they tell you you're doing it wrong, then you probably need to listen to, to other people. Now, with that being said, there are some things 
that should be considered with with regards to um, accuracy um, or you know being being sure that you're uh, understanding what it is that you think you're saying is 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 factual or or correct. And I know a lot of folks um, this time of year going into the end of December are excited because again it's you know yule and yule tide and all this other um very you know festivus winter um celebrations um and i wanted to talk about yule today i know a lot of content creators around this time of year are putting out stuff regards with regards to uh to yule um and saying you know uh you know yule was Yule came first and, you know, the Christians stole everything about Yule and turned it into Christmas. And, you know, if, if you want to, um, you know, make any sort of claims about, uh, you know, paganism being bad, then you should stop celebrating Christmas because it's full of pagan, you know, um, ritual and, and imagery and traditions and customs and all these sorts of things, right? Well, I wanted to, again, talk about Yule from a historical angle, at least to the degree uh, that we know of, and to sort of help you guys determine that uh, what what you may already know, some of you, some of you may be learning a thing or two about it. Um, and again, this is, this is information that I'm going to be um, citing sources for down in the description and show notes of this podcast. So, you know, when you're done listening or watching this, you can fact check it yourself. You know, and you can go and do your own research, which I always incur encourage people to do themselves instead of just, you know, it's like the old uh, Reading Rainbow, LeVar Burton, right? At the end of every episode of Reading Rainbow, I remember as a kid, you know, LeVar would always say, but you don't have to take my word for it. And that's, the, that, that's, that's great, you know, and it's what I always encourage people. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody else's word for it. Back it up with your own research and make sure that, 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 uh, Anything that you find that could potentially be, you know, <clears throat> contradicting what is said from what you heard uh, gets brought to the brought out to light, you know, because the one thing that uh, I've come to realize is, you know, uh, knowledge is constantly growing. You know, people are constantly growing. We're all learning new things. And especially with uh, trying to loosely reconstruct or, or, or hardcore reconstruct. If you're, if you're like a hardcore reconstructionist, you know, uh, there, there's so much that, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't know that we know now, and it changes things for us. So, you know, it's constantly growing, it's constantly evolving and we have to grow and evolve with it. Um, if that's your angle. Um, so, you know, as I said before, it, we're, we're coming into the time of year where, Everybody's all excited because they're 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 making preparations to do things with their, um, with their tribes, with their kindreds, with their groups of you know other like-minded folks to celebrate this, you know, winter uh, festival, which we'll refer to as Yule, um, and and uh, one of a very one of the very common things to um, to to adopt is the 12 nights of Yule and, and they, you know, interchange it with the 12 nights of Christmas and make it into the 12 nights of Yule. And for every 12 nights that lead up to the end of the, the month of December, um, there's a specific celebration or a specific, um, you know, focus, whether it be to ancestors, whether it be to a certain God or goddess um, or what have you. And so every night starting uh, on on the first of the twelve nights of quote unquote Yule, um, everybody is you know doing different things, and it's pretty readily you know uh, discoverable if you just you know Google twelve nights of Yule. If you Google Yule, <laughs> you're probably going to find uh, most you know information to reflect something around this time of year in in December, right? And that there's twelve nights, and you know the first night is is Mother's Night, and on and on down the line there's there's a night for thor there's a night for odin there's a night for the valkyries there's a night for i guess frig there's there's all different kinds of you know focuses um on each night leading up to the end of the year um on, on, at the end of the you know the calendar month of 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 uh december 
Now, this does not. This is this this episode, right? This is not intended to um, scold or or again tell people you're doing it wrong. If, if this is the way that you think Yule should be celebrated, then then you're doing it all wrong. All this is meant to do is just be again uh, a lesson, a learning, uh, educational, right? And then whatever fits, right? So like. I'm going to just use an example. If, if if there's a group of 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 pagans, of heathens, we'll say that that have been celebrating their Yule tide or Yule time uh, festivals or, or celebrations with their group for the last X amount of years, for however long it might be, and they do it in the month of December and they do it for 12 nights and it works for them, then there is no reason for them to stop doing it that way. Um because I feel that there is more value and there is more importance in the purpose behind doing it rather than the, you know, am I doing it historically correct? Am I, am I, uh, uh, you know, am I following the observances of the Yule uh, time of year, you know, the, the, the festival of Yule? Am I, am I following it based off of historical sources? Am I doing it that way or am I doing it just what I've, you know, read in a book, you know, in the library years ago, or what I Googled and found online in the first article that I, that I stumbled across. Really, what it matters is, is why are you doing it that way, the purpose behind what you're doing. And if you've achieved good results doing it that way, then my whole thing is, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, if you're exploring um, certain aspects of your paganism of your heathenry and you're trying to you know adopt it in the most authentic way possible while you know following a a historical approach to things and this may be you know more up your alley um maybe you haven't quite set a specific way of doing things maybe you're you know testing the waters you did it this way one year and now you're trying it a different way another year and now you're kind of going back and forth and you're, and you're adopting different things right uh one thing i've seen very, very recently, uh, and I say recently, like within the last few years, was this uh, rise of these uh, Sunawait, I think it's Sunawait or Sunwait candles, where you've got um, eight candles that you light. So eight, the, the candles that are lit represents the first set of et, I think, on the on the Elder Food Arc or something like that. And you've got, um, you know, so each candle represents a rune and there's a a thing that you're supposed to do on each site. And it reminds me of like Advent in a way. <laughs> it, it reminds me of like a, a heathen twist on, on Advent. Very, very modern. I don't even recall where the, the thing originated. I think it popped up somewhere in in Germany or, or Sweden maybe or something. I forget. But if you look up Sunweight candles online, there's 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 articles about its its origin. It's very, very new. When I say new, I mean like just within the last, you know, 50 years maybe. At the, at the most um and so it doesn't have ancient historical sources of doing anything but it, it is a very commonly uh, adopted new age you want to call it neo-pagan neo-heathen i don't know um tradition for some uh heathens around this time of year around yule and again if that's something you want to test out you want to figure it out you want to read more about it you want to learn more about it um, see if it fits your practices, then, hey, give it a shot. It ain't like if you do it, it's going to render you a useless heathen or a useless pagan or you're, you know, the worst pagan ever for having tried it. It's, it's you know, test the waters out, see if it works. Um, but it definitely doesn't have any um, historical, you know, basis uh, that we have source material to, to back up. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is is historical Yule, right? So Yule was a mid winter celebration it was one of the three high feasts or three high uh major bloats as, as it were that were um observed by uh the uh germanic peoples the germanic tribes prior to the viking age prior to the christian influence of of uh germania and and scandinavian countries and um mainland germania so when it was held, okay, was not at the end of December. So you have to think about the the way that time was reckoned or the, the way that time was 
observed um, prior to the Christianization of the areas. You know, um, the way that the Germanic tribes would observe time was was based off of the lunar solar, lunisolar calendar so when was the new moon when was the full moon and 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 and, and that sort of thing and yule is a mid winter um festival a, a mid winter bloat um out of all of the major bloats this is again one of the most important ones um Seeger bloat the victory bloat in the beginning of summer winter nights which starts the beginning of the winter months and then yule being the third one that signifies the middle of winter, we we've kind of we've reached the, you know, we we see light at the end of the tunnel. We're we're getting lighter days now. Soon, you know, the crops we can start thinking about planting once the the winter months are gone. You know, so it's kind of like that, you know, mid uh, mid mid midway point of the harshest time of the year in the north, and and you've made it. You you've survived. You haven't died. You haven't frozen. You haven't you know been robbed or, or killed or anything like that so it's 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 a time of, of of celebration for making it through the the middle of the harshest time of the year in the north um and every major bloat every high feast every every major you know historically documented celebration that was held was held for three nights yule is no different so um yule is known to uh more recently now uh, be celebrated on of course a, a full moon now which full moon are we talking about because again we've got x amount of months of the year and if and if we're looking at it from a historical you know a historical heathen um perspective we're looking at the. I don't know if I can because I'm pulling up my uh, my notes here. Um, you know, the, it didn't fall on fixed days of the year, and that's and that's one thing. It's like when we see modern uh, renditions of Yule. It's like Yule starts on on December 21st with Mother's Night, and it ends on December 31st with you know whatever, the last night of Yule, um, the twelve nights of Yule. Uh, that's not how it worked back then. You know, again, the the way the the the, the lunar solar cycles, um, when the full moons and the new moons um, began and 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 started, um, we 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 got to look at it from that perspective. Plus, we also have sources that that tell us that it was you know this, um, and and that there were three nights to it all. Um. So the moon cycles start on the new moon. So a moon cycle is from new moon to new moon, and, and full moon is is the uh, what's happening in, in in between. So when did you will get celebrated? It was and I lost my notes here because it can get. It's the first full moon after the third new moon or something like that. Hold on, I'm going to find it. I have all these. Yeah, every new moon begins a month. New moon to new moon was the cycle, which is where we get the word month from because it's a, it's a lunar, lunar, lunar solar um, thing. Um, bah, 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 bah. Where is it? Uh, I'm going to find it, guys. Just bear with me here. You guys can chill out for just a second. Is this it? Yeah. Yule is, is the, so when, if, if we're, if we're uh, trying to, to, to make a, a rule, right. If we're, if we're going to look at um, knowing when the, the holidays were, were kept from a historical heathen perspective, uh, if we're going to look at that, we we can come up with a Germanic rule for Yule, maybe. Um, so the rule for Yule is that Yule is always celebrated um, or it always lands on the first full moon after the first new moon following the winter solstice. So 
So when the winter solstice hits, we're actually, I think at the time of the, this podcast airing, we're, you know, less than a week away. So, you know, right around this time next week, give or take six, five, six, say yeah, five or six days or so from now, we're hitting the winter solstice. So the first full moon after the first new moon after the winter solstice. So this Yule coming up, right? Um, from a historical heathen perspective is going to be on the full moon in January, the first full moon in January, which is going to be January 6th. Last year, it was a different date. The next year, it's going to be a different date. So you got to follow the cycles of the moon to know when Yule hits. Same way with all the other major holy tides, because the, the major like Yule, Sigurdlöth, and Vinternights or Vinternater were held at on the full moon for three nights long. So on the third night was the full moon, and that was when the the feasting and all the celebrations culminated and, and concluded. So they were not 12 nights of Yule, or there were not 12 nights of Yule, I should say. There were always three nights of Yule, and it happened in roughly January-ish. Um, it's going to probably vary a bit, again, based off of the lunar solar calendar or the lunar solar cycles. So you're never going to have Yule land on the same month day of the month of the year every year. Not like how, again, as I mentioned before, um, the modern twist on, on the 12 nights of Christmas, 12 nights of Yule, you're always going to have it land on the same days and nights. Doesn't didn't work that way back then. So how do we know that it was three nights and, and how do we know that um, this was was when and how it was done? Um, we've got several sources that talk about this. Um, I'm going to find a few to read through real quick. Um, yeah, so one of the big one of the biggest um, referenced sources is Heimskringla saga, the saga of of Hakon the Good. Um, who was, of course, king of Norway that united everything, and he was the first Christian king, and um, he's the reason for the season. Or I should better say he's the reason why the Christmas uh, holiday now in December is called Yule, because in Scandinavia today, at the time that when Hawkin the Good was 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 king, you know he changed the historic the the old way of doing things, the pagan way of doing things, and moved it back to align with the Julian calendar that was adopted or that was being adopted um, in the conversion period when 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 Scandinavia was becoming Christianized, uh, and he moved it back so that way the people of the land you know that were celebrating their old pagan ways could align with how the Christ Mass, or Christmas, um, how and when that was observed. So there was already Christmas. There was already the Christ Mass. This was something. It wasn't that Christmas got discovered be, uh, or, or got, you know, twisted into or from old pagan ways. It would already existed. It was already there. Um, so so when everybody's like, oh, you know, they, they, they stole Yule from us. No, they didn't. They had their own thing. It just got moved up thanks to old Hawken over here. Um, so in the uh, chapter, let's see, chapter uh, 15 of the saga, Heimskringla saga, saga of Hakon the Good, King Hakon was a good Christian when he came to Norway, but as the whole country was heathen with much heathen uh, bloat um, and as many great people as well as uh, the favor of the common people were to be uh conciliated he he resolved to practice his christianity in private but he kept sundays and the friday fasts and some tokens of the great holy days he made a law that the festival of yule should begin at the same time as christian people held it their christ mass and that every man under penalty should brew a meal of malt into ale and therewith keep the yule holy as long as it lasted before him the first night of Yule was on Hökenot, that is midwinter night, and Yule was held for three nights. It was his intent, as soon as he had set himself fast in the land, 
and had subjected the whole to his power to introduce Christianity, he went to work first by enticing the Christianity to Christianity the men who were desired uh, dearest to him. And many, out of friendship to him, allowed themselves to be baptized and some laid aside performing blows. So again, uh, thanks to Hawken the Good in, in Norway, and uh, that's where people started moving uh, their pagan practices of Yule in the midwinter, January-ish time frame, back to when, again, the Christmas holiday is being held now. So that's why we see, you know, 12 nights of Yule. I think there's there's some similarities to that. But again, it was never historically 12 nights. It was always it was always three nights. Um ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see here. So there's another reference to um the, the major bloats that I alluded to earlier, Yule, Sigurdvlot, and, and Winter Nights. There's a mention of these in the Inglinga saga, Saga of the Inglings, which has Swedish, uh, and you know it, it, it's the chrono chronicles of the, of the kings and ancestry of, of the kings of Sweden. Uh, but in Inglinga saga, chapter eight, from about the year 1225, so again, we're already talking about after um the viking age um lists the three great bloats of the year and, and it's a quote it says odin established the same law in his land that had been in force in Osaland on winter day first day of winter there should be a bloat for a good year and in the middle of winter for a good crop this is yule and then the third bloat should be on um summer day a victory bloat which is what Sigurd bloat is so Sigurd Bloat is Victory Bloat in Old Norse. Already talked about um, the Heimskringla saga, the saga of Hawking the Good, about um, the, the the Yule being celebrated for three nights. That's again in, in the mid-1200s, you know, when it was uh, written. Um, we also see a reference to this in the Poetic Edda, um, in the lay of Helgi, the son of Hjorath, of, sorry, Hjorvath, Hjorvarth. Um, it's a very long passage. I'm not going to read it right now. It's it's there's a lot to it there, but I'll I'll leave a name for you guys to research. If you, I'm, I'm sure there's got to be PDFs, or if any of you have a copy of the Poetic Edda, it is again. Um, I'm not going to butcher the the old Norse name, but it's I think it's Helga Vita Hjorvarth Sonar, the Lay of Helgi, the son of Hjorvarth, and it's in chapter four. So I'm going to I'm going to mention that down in the show notes and in the description as well um aside from that um if you are looking at this from a saxon angle the saxon heathen angle you are familiar with bead um so this this is some old stuff this is way before the start of the viking age um so this is around 725 AD in one of Bede's work, De Temporum Rate Ration. I don't know. I don't speak Latin. Um, but in but Bede says that thus the moon by which they began their winter season was called Winter Filieth, a name compounded of the terms for winter and full moon, because from the full moon of that moon winter was thought to begin. Um so again, there's there's a lot of of other scholarly work, you know, that that is better than than what I can tell you here right now, that uh, confirms that again, Yule was three nights. Yule was done midwinter in the north in in uh, you know around the January time frame. It was never set the same day or month of the year every year because again, the cycles of the moon change. Um, but so those are some differences, right? Those are some differences to what is done now versus what was done then. Now let's look at some similarities, right? What are some um, things about Yule historically that were done that are done today, regardless of when you do it, whether it's, you know, the 12 nights of Yule in December slash Christmas, uh, or if you do it around more closely to the historically reckoned keeping of it so what are some things that were similar then that are 
redone, uh, you know, relived and, and seen now in terms of traditions or customs, right? And bear in mind, I'm just citing a few things, mentioning a few of the more common ones. That there's probably at least a hundred or more different sagas that have reference to Yule plus the Eddas, you know. Um, so we don't know everything that there is to know about historical Yule yet. We're still figuring a lot of things out. We're still coming up with a lot of things. And that's why I mentioned earlier on that a lot of the stuff that was known back in, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago probably was what we knew back then. And now we're we're discovering new things. So it's 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 always growing and we're always changing. But as of where we can conclude, you know, right now, one of the big things is that there was gift giving at 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 Yule, you know especially during Sumbul, uh, which was a, a, a ritual in itself. There uh, were, again, three days, three nights, we know that. Um, but that the the way that the um, Yule was celebrated with, with gift giving, this is pretty standard for all of the Germanic tribes, regardless of the region. Um, a couple other neat things is that in especially Sweden, you know, so for some of the Norse uh, countries, the, the, the Scandinavian countries, especially Sweden, Yule was a bloat to start thinking about planting of crops. You know, as I mentioned before, you've made it through the worst part of the of the winter, the harshest part of the year. Um, you, things are starting to look up a bit. You know, you can start looking forward to longer days, warmer days, the return of the sun, which is life, which, you know, help your crops grow. Um and, you know, again, there was a lot of feasting, there was a lot of drinking, um, there was, I know a lot of folks nowadays, ourselves included, like my, 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 uh, my family, my tribe, when we do our Yule, uh, we always have a ham, you know, and granted, we're not set up, uh, you know, to um, slaughter or, or raise our own hogs, our own domestic pigs, so we, you know, have to go to the stores and stuff and get ham uh but 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 boar or ham was a very popular uh thing to consume in ancient times for yule specifically and it is a common food item for most of the modern yule slash christmas meals right christmas ham yule ham uh, but there's a reason for that um the hair 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 over saga um I'm pronouncing that Her, Hervar, Hervar saga mentions oaths being sworn on boars, you know, the 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 Yule boar, the Yule ham, and uh, or swearing oaths on the bristles of, of of the boar that was cooked. So it's an important element um back then as it is relived a bit now, maybe not for the same reasons. Um, but again, it's a custom that we see that uh is 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 kind of relived. Um, we know one thing that, um, for the Germanic tribes with Yule being a three day and three night long, you know, celebration, um, is, is one slight exception. There were, uh, Germanic tribes of, of the, the old English, uh, people that were a mixture of, you know, the Roman Britain Celts. Um, and some English people who had Germanic um, roots and, and, and had migrated. But the English uh, heathens, or the English people, I should say, um, celebrated both their Yule and, and the Mother's Night, which is more like a, uh, an Easter celebration, I think. It, it, it came more from the cult of the Roman Rhine land. Um, so... Once again, some similarities, gift giving, the ham, lots of feasting, drinking, you know. Um, and, you know, you can get taught, you can get, you can get really tied up in the minutia, uh, I guess, of it all. If you're really, really focused on trying to reconstruct your heathenry and, into the most accurate version based off of historical sources then i think you'll and i don't mean this in any sort of i don't i don't mean this in a bad way you you almost run the risk of uh 
losing sight again of the purpose why you're doing something you know are you just going through the motions because this is the way it was done 1200 years ago or are you doing it with purpose to build traditions for people to carry on now you know that's why it was done the way it was done back then it's because it was tradition that was handed down to them and they were living those traditions i talked about this with um heidi and, and roger uh abney from the 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 runestone heathens group up there in ohio a couple of podcasts ago right talking about how tradition is should be the preservation of fire it's it's not this worship of ashes it's not something that is dead and gone and useless anymore that we should be focusing on it should be the things that are still burning still able to be kindled and breathing new life into those things right so again it it nothing against historical heathens i i actually love learning most of all this stuff from from some very you know reputable sources and and i say you know learn as much as you can you know you're going to find certain sources come higher or lower on the on the recommendation poll especially from some people and you can really get into again you can get i don't say lost in the sauce uh you know or get caught in the minutia of it all and, and lose sight of the purpose behind it. What is the purpose? What is your worldview? What are your what are your people's worldview? What are, what are the thews? What are the traditions? What are the customs of the people that you've come to tie your life to and, and with? Right? How have you set up uh, those things in your you know collectives, your groups? Doesn't really matter so much at that point how it was done a thousand years ago, because that's how it worked for them. If we're trying to, again, preserve that fire of tradition, I think that's a great place to start. I think it's great that we have such scholars and, 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 and people who are devoted to finding those answers and, and unraveling those mysteries and uncovering those concealed parts of history that have been buried for so long. You know, it's invaluable to have that kind of a, a, a devoted network of people to to tap into and it's nowadays and in the 21st century with the internet and and so on and so forth it's 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 easier now than ever to really sink your teeth into some of this stuff and and if that's your thing if that's what you know if that's your if that's your jive then then go for it um i just you know when i first started to really focus on my heathenry and 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 doing things that that worked for me it's i i wanted to learn about the past so that way i could build something for myself and for the people closest and nearest and dearest to me for our future you know what is stuff that we can do now that as our tribe grows and as we get new people that come into our tribe that that when our bodies are dead and gone then the you know clearly folk is still here where you know I am not clearly folk, you know, myself, uh, you know, individual members, it, it, clearly folk is everybody. And then when an individuals pass on, you know, the, the legacy, the spirit of the tribe lives on the spirit of the people live on because it's, it's, it's not tied to just one person. It's tied to the entirety of the group. So, you know, the legacy continues. And if, you know, the way things that Hurley Folk does works for us that and it doesn't work for, you know, the next tribe or kindred or whatever down the road, then that's fine. They're doing things their way. And they're doing things that should hopefully be preserving the luck and the, and the future of their tribe and their people. That's what it's about. You know, it's about finding that authenticity, that 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 deeply rooted purpose. And again, I, be, I believe it needs to be deeply rooted, but we can't get so stuck in the roots. We can't get so root bound that we've lost daylight and we've now become stagnant and we can't grow anymore because there's, you know, we're, we're, we, we, you know, any plant, any tree that becomes root bound gets tangled up in itself, right? You think of a, of a potted plant that starts growing so much that it can't grow anymore because it's contained into that small pot well it becomes just a ball of roots it doesn't have the opportunity to grow it gets stunted it needs room it needs space it needs a, it needs the opportunity to branch out to grow to see other things to feel other things to network right and i feel like that's the way heathenry works it's it's 
you know, very basic in that in that in that sense. There's there's work to be done. There's there's it's it's it doesn't just happen overnight. And it doesn't just happen without work being put into it. Um, but it's definitely there at its core, you know. Um, so going back to it all, kind of wrapping it up, you know. Um, this is the second to last podcast of the season of season three. Um, if you guys uh tune in next week i'm hoping to get some guests on to kind of have a season three finale we'll see how that goes um but yeah this is going to be there's only one more uh episode to uh to season three and then season four of the random heathen ramblings podcast starts next month in 2023 so lots of great Lots of great stuff going on this year, you guys. And I do just want to say before I wrap this up that, um, you know, seeing the growth, seeing the advancement of the podcast has all been thanks to your participation, your interaction and your engagement. You know, you guys commenting, sharing, posting your thoughts, answering questions or answering, you know, inquiries and things from from fans, from myself, from from everybody, just being engaging and being a part of it all has made this podcast grow into what it is. Um, so you should be congratulating and thanking yourselves as well, because this is, you know, partly me and and the majority of it is, is all of you. You know, so wherever you are listening and watching um, to on today's Random Heathen Rambling podcast, um, you know, this time next week uh, will be the final season, well, the final episode of, of season three, you know, and it'll probably be, the start for a lot of you folks that uh that do the 12 nights of you'll probably right at the beginning uh or at least you know a couple of days in to your um celebrations so if that's your thing if that's your groove and if that's where you're going with it and that's what you've been doing and that's what works for you then i wish you all a safe prosperous and warm yule a good Yule, a glad Yule. And for everybody else that is um, celebrating later on, like myself and my tribe, you know, when we when we get our when we get our Yule on next uh, next month, you know, good Yule to you all as well. And we'll talk again around that time. Um, but thank you all so much for listening and watching today's episode. If you liked it, if you're watching this on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up wherever you're listening to this. If you're listening to this on Spotify, favorite it, add it to your playlist, share this around, whatever platform you catch this on. If you're able to engage it in any way by upvoting, favoriting, liking, sharing, whatever, uh, it's greatly appreciated. If you do that, it helps again with the growth of this podcast. So let's look forward to a great 2023. I will talk to you all again on the final season finale of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. So I hope you all again have a wonderful Yule that you are celebrating this coming week. And may your ancestors smile upon you. And may the gods continue to notice you. Thank you all. <laughs>